Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our 15th Health Matters with uh, Hatsuno Kiseki um, uh, live session. And uh, we will be talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So uh, what's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Um, NA, or in short, NAFLD is a condition where excess fat builds up in the liver, even if you don't consume excessive alcohol. It's becoming increasingly prevalent due to factors like poor diet, sedentary lifestyle, and of course, uh, obesity. So, um, uh, you know, today, Dr. Siva and Tiffany will be shedding light on what's NAFLD, what causes it, and most importantly, how to manage and potentially reverse this condition through lifestyle changes and other approaches. So um, this is uh, this session is essential for anyone who is concerned about uh, liver health and looking to take proactive steps towards better well-being. So don't miss out on this informative and uh, potentially life-changing discussion. So today our session will be a little different. Um, where it will be more of a conversation uh, between Dr. Siva and uh, Tiffany. So um, at any point of time, if you have questions, you can throw in and, you know, I will just post the questions to them. Of course, um, we will have a PowerPoint slide behind um, to guide us so that we don't, you know, talk too much as well. So as usual, uh, if you, the audience, have any topic uh, that you would like us to cover in our upcoming sessions, please feel free to let us know uh, in the comment section so we can talk about it in our next session. So there's too many sessions. Um, don't be shy, but uh, if you're shy, you can always reach us uh, in by sending us a private message. So uh, I hope, we hope that uh, this session will equip you with the knowledge that you need to make smarter, informed choices, and we hope you can share with your family and friends as well, right? So uh, without further ado, um, over to you, Dr. Siva and Tiffany. Let me start the PowerPoint presentation. So I'll just start first by um, saying that uh, how, how do you know that you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Uh, it's a disease where you don't uh, usually find out uh, until you do a test um, to do an ultrasound and to see that uh, you have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And also when your liver uh, enzyme readings are a bit out of the normal, then the doctor will suggest, okay, why, why don't we do... Um, uh, uh, ultrasound and see if there's any uh, inflammation or scarring on your liver. And then, then only they will find out that it, they have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, how does one get it? So uh, obesity is the main thing. Uh, insulin resistance as well. Uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, triglycerides, sedentary lifestyle, unhealthy diet, genetics, uh, rapid weight loss. So a person, there, there will be two types of person that will have uh, non-alcohol fatty liver. Um, one will look like they are overweight and then um, they will have some underlying uh, insulin sensitivity problem. Um, they will have or, or they will be someone who is thin but then they would have uh, a lot of fat around the abdominal area. Uh, these, two, these two things are caused by sedentary lifestyle where, they, where the lifestyle is um, very lacking of exercise. And then when there's lacking of exercise, um, the liver, and especially when you, you have a diet very high in carbohydrates or very high in sugar, um, the excess sugar will turn excess sugar will first turn to glycogen to keep inside our muscles or our liver for energy usage. But if it's all full and there's more uh, to keep, they will turn into fats and triglycerides and then they will be kept uh, 
in our organ. So um, not in our organ, so around our organ. So there'll be fatty uh, colon, uh, fatty liver. Uh, then this type of people you'll see like they, they are skinny, but then they have a bulge at the tummy there. Uh, anything you want to add? Yeah. So I want to just explain in detail about uh, insulin resistance. So while well, we all know uh, for a sugar to get into the cell, uh, insulin is the key to open the door for the sugar to enter into the cell. So when sugar enters together by when insulin unlocks the door, then when oxygen goes in, that's where it gets burnt and we get ATP, which is the energy currency. So in insulin resistance, what happens is the cells just don't recognize insulin. So what happens when our cells don't recognize insulin, sugar can't get in. So there will be a lot of sugar floating around. And that actually, as what Tiffany mentioned, uh, if our body uses it, it converts to energy. If not, our body keeps it as a fat and put it around the belly, tummy and the liver. That's where the problem starts. So when you consume food and if it is converted immediately to energy, you will not have this problem. But when you consume excessive food and your insulin it cannot unlock the door for the sugar to enter, that's where the problem starts. That's what it means by insulin resistance. It means the cells are resistant to the insulin and they don't give way for the sugar to enter. So excess sugar in bloodstream, our body has a mechanism to convert into glycogen and then as a fat and put it in our muscle and the liver. If it puts in the muscle, we develop belly weight. Or uh, if it puts in the liver, the liver gets fatter. That's why it's fatty liver. And it's non-alcoholic. Previously, people who drink a lot was associated with uh, alcoholic fatty liver disease. But now recently, a lot of cases is non-alcoholic, like people who don't consume alcohol are getting this problem. So one of it is our diet are rich in sugar. Like for example, every product you eat is sugar plus sugar plus sugar plus sugar. Let's take an example of Milo. So Milo has a sugar, but when you order a Milo in the shop, they add condensed milk. Condensed milk has our sweetener. So there is, I have seen some shop adding sugar and then condensed milk and then Milo. So it is sugar plus sugar plus sugar. So if your body can't process it, that's where the problem starts. It gets into the muscles as fat and then in, on the liver itself as a fatty liver. So I had, I guess now you understand what it means by insulin resistance leading to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, so how, how to manage uh, if you have it? Of course, healthier diet, physical activities, weight, weight management, avoid harmful substance, such as also... Um, those substances, uh, start, such as perfume. Uh, so those... you're referring to endocrine disrupting chemicals mm -hmm. in our environment. From everything now, as mm. it has an endocrine from the shampoo to the toothpaste to the dress we use to petroleum, everything has an endocrine disrupting chemical, which actually all gets stuck in the liver because liver, you can consider it as one job is purifying and detoxifying. So everything gets there and that's where... Uh, if too much chemical, it will impair the function of the liver, so leading to fatty liver also. Yes, and yeah. also... Yeah, please. Mm, yes, yes. And also, um, for the rest, if you do not have enough rest and enough sleep, uh, you will also uh, stress the liver further by uh, producing more hormones. Um, and then uh, that will also stress the liver, and then the liver, like all, all this will, will happen. Uh, and also, if you are constantly in under stress, you will produce uh, more cortisol hormones. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, one more thing. Uh, when, when it comes to stress, uh, let's see how stress and sugar are related. Uh, our body actually doesn't know uh, well everything around us. It actually perceives everything through the five senses. Say, for example, uh, uh, at nighttime, a liver has a detox time. At that particular time, if you are awake and if you are eating, the liver can't actually do its detoxification. So what happens? So when you keep on repeating it over time, so the liver actually loses its ability to detox and a lot of chemicals get accumulated there. So 
because of that, the liver loses its function and becomes fatty. And one more thing, stress. See, our body really doesn't know our stress is a mental stress or a physical stress. In a, in, say, for example, a lion is chasing you. We need energy. So what it does, liver will, our body will send a mechanism to our muscles to discharge all the sugar into the bloodstream to run. But the problem is stress, our body perceives similar to a lion chasing us, whereas in reality it's not. So you're sitting, but you are under stress and body is dumping sugar into the bloodstream. So here is where the problem starts. When we, when the sugar, lot of excess sugar, pancreas starts to produce more insulin. And then when there is more insulin and if it is not sensitive, uh, that's where the problem is. All the sugar released due to stress gets converted to fat in the liver and it becomes fatty liver. Over to you, Tiffany. <clears throat> And also, um, I would like to add that stress, uh, some, your body will not know if you are stressing up happily or not. Sometimes when you are uh, playing video games, you are playing video games uh, until midnight, uh, you are in a, a fight or flight um, mode because you are playing a very... Uh, uh, a thrilling game and in intensive game and then uh, to you it's fun uh, you ca you can last you have the energy to last for like hours but your liver is actually stressing up while you're having fun so a lot of the young uh young adults or maybe young teenagers now we see that they they have this uh, development of non-alcoholic fatty liver or their liver enzymes are not uh, normal and then they wonder why you know we we don't uh they will say okay maybe we sleep late but then other than that we are okay and we don't have stress but actually playing games are also um a form of stress to your body right mm, yeah if physical go out and play a real game <laughs> that's much better ah, yes. for your body yeah play games such as uh physical activities yeah. And it will help you to uh, build muscle, uh, lose, lose fat and lose weight. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. A healthier diet also, uh, with, uh, especially for cruciferous uh, vegetables, uh, such as uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and they are very good to help the liver. Um, also, yeah, the fruits and vegetables, they are high in antioxidants, vitamins and minerals. Mm, aim for colorful variety. Uh, whole grains food like whole wheat, quinoa, brown rice and oats can help regulate blood sugar levels and support liver health. Yes, uh, and again to reiterate, uh, we need a good microbiome, good microbiome. Uh, that's where Kisiki range of products comes into play. Because uh, for people who are diabetic, if you check their fecal microbiome, which is the gut microbiome, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, important species missing. And uh, that's one reason our body can't break down and it, uh, they become diabetic. So a good source of pre pro postbiotics helps uh, in maintaining a good liver health as well. <clears throat> Healthy fats as well. Uh, uh, fatty fish like salmon mackerel, sardines, green tea, coffee. Yeah, coffee, moderate coffee. But if you have too much, then your body will start to have um, stress, start to produce the stress hormone. Uh, garlic, anti-inflammatory, powerful antioxidant food. Uh, anything else? Can we? Okay. Yeah. Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, all the cruciferous, uh, which are high in sulfur. Uh, so like, uh, so garlic has a large, large amount of sulfur, which actually helps in the detoxification process of the liver. Hmm. Yeah. And also those that, um, something like uh, turmeric, oh, it's yeah. good for the liver as well. Yeah, and then the herb is a milk thistle or silmarin, uh, also helps in our liver. It's a traditional herb used for centuries. So almost every liver mm -hmm. supplement will have silmarin inside. And also um, one thing that is uh, bitter, something that is bitter in yes, right. nature, it will help with liver, uh, bitter gut, 
um, the traditional, uh, like Malaysian and Singapore traditional herb is mugwort. Mugwort. Uh, uh, people, sometimes people used to boil in water and then drink the water or they will uh, make, uh, they will cook in egg as omelette. Oh, Okay. Yes. Because I don't need eggs. <laughs> oh, okay. Because, but a lot of people, they do not like the taste because it is quite bitter. Yes. Uh, bitters have the capacity to stimulate bile. So that's why in the past, one supplement which has been there for a long time was called Swedish bitters. Uh, so they, it has a mixture of few very bitter herbs, which will actually stimulate the liver. Yeah, Swedish bitters, just few drops uh, together with the lunch, it helps to move your liver, liver function. Especially with eating a uh, heavy, um, fatty food. Yeah, and like fish the and problem chips. is, uh, honestly, if you eat real fat, like real butter, we won't have that problem. But now the problem comes mm. with refined oils. These refined oils are pro-inflammatory food and they actually tax our body a lot especially the liver. So like, uh, you know, like when people take real olive oil, and especially people who go through liver, gallbladder detox, it's actually basically on the last day they drink olive oil. Mm. That's fine. But if we drink any of the refined oils, you know, rice bran oil or grapeseed oil or soya oil, cottonseed oil, palm oil, anything oil. Refined, oh. highly refined, it really taxes the liver. Yeah, I think I I, I guess uh, that is uh, something which we would like um, you know Dr. Tan to to discuss about in the near future as well. Uh, what do you think, Dr. Tan? Is that something which you would like to talk about that is ben that will be beneficial to the um, you know to our audience? Yes, we can talk about like butter and margarine because I think. Uh, Due to the marketing by yeah. companies, um, a lot of them try to say that plant-based margarine is better. Margarine is better because it's not saturated fat, and all these polys and saturated fatty acid in plant-based. So it gives a perception to a lot of consumer thinking that oh, margarine is actually better than butter. But mm. like Dr. Siva mentioned, butter is natural. You yeah. do not have to do any modification to the fat. Yeah, and, and one of the food actually, which is the worst of all, is called prata. That's really soaked in uh, completely made from refined flour, which has added bromide and other things in the refining process, which attacks the thyroid gland. And then they use tons of refined palm oil and then on top of it, they stuff it with margarine. So I always say the best way to die for a vegetarian or people who love prata, definitely it's going to tax the liver. I disagree with you, Dr. Siva. Why? For the purpose that I love prata. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're managing with your own drink. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, that's right. I okay. still remember when I was young, the prata was made from wholesome wheat. And ghee, and wheat. then you know, they use ghee to... Yes, ghee and butter. Actually, they yeah. add real butter and they make vegetable korma. So it means that korma exactly, is full yeah, of exactly. vegetables. But now it has been totally modified to with chunks of oil, margarine, and then tons of meat. That is going to clog up the arteries and clog the liver. Okay. So, um, so maybe your darling should learn how to make wheat prata and make it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe. So, um, yeah, with this slide, um, you know, uh, for the past week, uh, I have been doing research and uh, reading a lot about um, uh, a lot of studies that's done by universities uh, elsewhere uh, and found that, you know, for non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease, uh, postbiotics does um, help in the, um, how should I say, influencing the gut microbiota and also the liver metabolism. Actually, you know, um, postbiotics are being studied more and more um, we ourselves are trying, Dr. Lim, 
is helping us out very, 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 very much uh, to do these studies to understand what are the metabolites available in our kiseki as well. So that's where we can uh, attribute you know, um, our product to certain uh, problems, health problems or diseases. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, my slide and the next one would be back to you guys. Supplements, vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids. So this can even come from a, uh, instead of actually fish oil supplements, I still recommend uh, people to go for real fish. That's much better. So the moment you make it into an oil, it gets oxidized. And that's where to prevent it, they add a synthetic version of vitamin E. But rather eating a good of uh, chia seeds or real fish, uh, that helps a lot. And even in olive oil, uh, the best olive oil actually is not on every supermarket shelf. It's very, very because uh, the production of olive oil really is so less when compared to the whole world consumption. So it's really a mafia trade, you know, like cacao, avocado. Olive oil is also a mafia trade. But if you know the right source, there are some very unique brands. The taste is totally different. And why? Real olive oil tastes bitter, actually. Yes, um, I agree with you uh, because, you know, I, I love to cook. And then, um, of course, you know, I used to use a lot of olive oil. And, and, and if you spend, invest a little bit more, you really, really, really get a really good one. And the taste is totally different. And you have some peppery notes in it as well. Yes, that's yeah. Good. I, yeah. So okay. actually, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, your wife is lucky. She don't need to learn cooking when the husband is a master chef. <laughs> so you need to learn how to make wheat prata and not her. <laughs> only, only wheat prata. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. And probably I'll probably do a live uh, session as well. Come to our restaurant. We will teach you how to make banana leaf, uh, curry, uh, wholesome curry and wheat prata. Excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, sorry, back to you guys uh, on the uh, supplements that helps. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, milk thistle, which is silmar in the technical term, is default hub. Uh, in Tamil, there is a product called Kila Nelly. Let me try to source for the right English name. Uh, that is an excellent bitter herb. Uh, well, it is called Philanthus Niruri. Wow, it's a bit hard for me to pronounce, but uh, actually we can see a lot around us, you know. Uh, when you see the leaves, below there will be like a small uh, Indian gooseberry hanging. That's an excellent herb for anyone with liver disorders. It's in India, it has been used for 5,000 years. So when you type the word Kila Nelli, K-E-E-L-A-N-E-L-L-I, Nelli means Amla, Indian gooseberry. A kila means something which is grown below. So this is a very amazing herb, uh, which is everywhere you can find in Malaysia, India, Thailand, Singapore. Just below the leaf uh, branch, you can see something hanging. Extremely bitter, but excellent for the liver. The, the, the local people... name is called Dukong Anak. Oh. Local name. Uh, local name is called Dukong Anak. Yeah, okay. It's yes. a very common wheat. Yep. Yeah. Excellent for liver health. Oh, okay. It is scientifically proven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For centuries. You know, uh, see, uh, this is a company uh, which actually making a liver product. They also, I think they added that particular herb because it's there for long, long, long time. Yeah. Philanthus neruli. Uh, yes. Without that herb, no one can make a liver supplement. This company has been there for almost 50, 60 years. So, so I just drink a little bit of it every day. That's why it's always on my desk. You know, that's, that's excellent to know. Um, you know. I do not know whether we have uh, that product here in Malaysia. No, no, no. It's there everywhere. It's a herb. It's a weed. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean the product that you're taking. Because, you know, um, most modern working people do not have time to go and find the weeds especially those living in the city like in singapore you no that's why i'm, I'm going overseas once a month to rejuvenate in a farm 
Okay. You see, in, among my relative circle, no one gets their departure ticket before 80 to 100. <clears throat> Majority of them live at 80 and above. Why? They all live in farms. They all sleep early. You know, liver detox time is between 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. They sleep from 9.30 so the liver can do a regular detox every day and that gives them longevity. Excellent. Yeah, and they use all these herbs on a regular basis because our lifestyle from young, I still remember, you know, we were given regular uh, uh, colonics to flush out the worms, to detox our colon, to take care of the liver, take care of sleep. So all those things have disappeared now. I always say city living is welcome to hell. That's my message for city dwellers. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can move your clinic to Penang. It's you know more balance. Well, I, I love that. But only <laughs> just waiting for the traffic jams to go away. <laughs> um, that will take some time. So um, yeah, for those that have just joined, um, yeah, just a quick recap. Uh, so. You know, fatty liver disease, um, a person can get it without the need, you know, without having alcohol at all. You know, um, if you have a sedentary uh, lifestyle, that means, you know, you, after you eat, you, you you sit and work the whole day. Um, you know, if you are eating high fatty uh, foods, uh, highly processed foods, not enough rest and all that, um, all that contributes to the, the, the problem. Uh, and and a quick a quick quick uh, summary of um, what to take. You know anything that is bitter. The bitterer it is, I'm sure there's a word for it. The bitterer it is, you know the better it is. And um, I I think you know if it is sour, it also uh, helps as well. A sour there's one problem. Uh, for some mm -hmm. people, it will stir up the stomach acid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I tested many times when I take sour things at night wow i get a headache for the next three days okay yeah so but bitter no no problem at all okay all right so yeah that's a quick recap so uh time for q a okay. so anyone has any questions let's start with um our panel um dr lim or dr tan any questions um tiffany you have any questions for yourself <laughs> Actually, I want to ask. I want to ask if um, Doctor Sivan knows about uh, Udo's oil. Udo oil. Because uh, I will always. No. Yeah. See, I Udo's would... oil is a mixture of omega three, six, and nine. Mm. Uh, to me, the moment anything is crushed and made into an oil, already it becomes rancid. I rather say when instead of taking olive oil, I tell people: Yes, you take olive oil when you're doing a liver flush. But other times I say you eat the real olive. Yeah. Uh, you know, currently I saw some, some new machines. You know, you can make instant sesame seed oil. You just put pour some sesame seed oil, you get an instant oil. That you use for cooking. Currently, anything packaged on the shelf, I think it doesn't have the real potency. Hmm. Yeah. Because, because, yeah, as, as you say that after crushing it, uh, it will, of course, be oxidized, oxidized yeah. already. Yeah, currently uh, I saw machines, even peanuts. You put in peanut, they give you instant peanut oil. You put in dry coconut, you get dry coconut oil. I think that is the way we need to go. Mm -hmm. Make things at the time we want to eat. And when I, mean, I look at my dad, he's 84, no, no BP, no sugar, nothing. Why? He ate the cleanest foods and slept well. And he don't plan for tomorrow. He said, let me wake up and then plan about tomorrow. And currently we all go thinking thousand and one things about tomorrow without even knowing whether we will even wake up. So when we have all those things, it will stress our body. I always say every night before going to bed, make sure that the, your chapter is closed. You open a new chapter when you wake up. I always say I live by the day. Yeah, though I know what to do, but I always want to close every day and open a new day so that I don't have to worry thinking about what I need to do, wake up and do. Except for things like, you know, Ikigai in Japan, they look forward for happiness, meeting friends or doing things what they like, but they never go to bed worrying about it. Why? And one more thing with liver is uh, anger. Uh, so I want to just, uh, 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 this, I mean, uh, move away from this topic. A couple of, uh, a week ago, uh, I met a lady 
uh, she had lung cancer. Uh, and there was an another client of mine. Uh, she came to me for breast cancer and she was doing very well for breast cancer. And suddenly she was diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. The reason uh, was she lost her son. Her son was 41, went to toilet. She was dead in the toilet. Heart attack at 41. So that grief actually, actually overtook her. And then that's what, in my opinion, because grief is associated with lung. Likewise, for people who are constantly angry, it affects the liver. As per the TCM uh, medicine system of medicine, anger directly affects the liver. So when going to bed, don't have any angry thought. I mean, see, during the day, a lot of things can happen, you know, workplace conflict, whatever. Just put it aside. I said, try to close everything and think, program your mind, reset your mind that, you're going to bed with no worries, nothing to distract. And that's why I do an auto-suggestion to sleep every night. And I find I can sleep deeper. Some days, can you believe I sleep straight for 12 hours? <laughs> like last Sunday, I slept for 12 hours straight, 9 p.m. to 9.40 a.m. the next day morning. But well, that's excellent. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. Just sleep. Why? Well, yeah, I always do auto-suggestion, you know. I, I will not allow my mind to think anything about tomorrow or any worries. I tell the mind everything is okay, everything is settled, nothing to worry, just shut down and go to sleep. In less than five minutes, I, I just do stuff, go into deep sleep. And anger, don't ever go to bed with anger. That is going to affect your liver even more. Yes, I totally agree um, with you, Dr. Siva. Um, always leave your work your issues, your jealousy behind. Anything uh, negative. Yeah, everything. I always ask most of my clients, the first question you ask, do you sleep? The answer is no. I, I hardly, maybe one in a hundred, I say, yeah, I sleep well. They're all the most retired people. They're everything done in life. But all other people, they say they just can't sleep. So that is going to be a big epidemic soon. I, I, I guess we, we need to find... Um, uh, another speaker that speaks about mental health as well. Uh, I think that that will be also important um, to to the audience. Um, basically, we we are trying to add more and more speakers uh, for this uh, for our uh, Facebook live sessions. Um, if you have any questions or any any topic that you would like us to cover, do let us know. Um, even if you have questions about uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, Dr. Lim would be able to assist you as well. Am I right, Dr. Lim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 uh, you know, so anything that uh, you are, how should I say, um, interested in or curious about, you know, just shoot us the questions, uh, you know, even if this is a rerun. Um, you know, just send us the message uh, at the comment section and we will be able to answer you. Um, so, we question want, yeah. to Tiffany, what is the, what, how do you define moderate amount of coffee? Because I drink moderate. a lot of coffee. <laughs> Actually, well, I, I one, one cup is, is moderate to me. One cup is moderate. And if you drink, if you, uh, and also um, do not drink coffee to the point that you are addicted to it. It's like you cannot function when you don't drink. That is uh, very dangerous. Uh. It is it, <clears throat> uh, not only for coffee, but for other things as well. We cannot, cannot depend on something um, to make us energize. One is too little. Okay. Uh, you see, like um, our coffee cups here is minimum 250 ml. In India, the coffee cup is 50 ml. <laughs> so I tell them, you know, you need to give me five cups in order for me to meet my Singapore one cup quota. But I always say, um, whether drinking coffee, whether you're drinking black or with condensed milk, 
So if you're drinking black, again, it's like espresso type or like a normal brew type, like a drip. So you need to see, like to me, how I know I've exceeded the limit is when my heart rate goes up when I drink black coffee, I know I have taken up more. Or maybe I become immune to an extent, even you drink five cups, it's... <laughs> Then maybe I suggest one in the morning, one in the afternoon, not after 3, 4 p.m. But there are people who drink coffee before going to bed and can go to sleep. I used to be like that. But after I become half century and above, I realized that's not working anymore. Previously, I can drink coffee and sleep after I hit 50 plus. Uh, no, I, that keeps me awake until 1, 2. So I, I, in fact, I reduced my coffee intake a lot, maybe three, four cups a week. And the two black and very small quantity just for the taste, just for the bitter taste uh, so that it will stimulate the liver. And also it will help to purge the colon. That's how I take my limit. If I have constipation, I go drink a half, half cup of black coffee. Wow, within 10 minutes, I can go to the toilet naturally. Okay. Out of curiosity, Dr. Tan, how many cups do you drink a day? Great secret, maybe. Minimum three. Oh, that's okay. Uh, not 50 50 ml. That's minimum. Oh, okay, I hear the word. The normal, normal uh, 200 ml cup. But the thing is, uh, um, are you taking Nescafe or is it from a machine? Exactly. Uh, I, I, I used to take. Uh, three in one premix of tea. Yeah, poison. Pure like, poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've changed to those uh capsule. Okay. Uh, I would say that's even more poisonous. <laughs> what? Just go and get some hot coffee brewed and take it. See, see the I I won't say good or bad. See, normally when there's a chemical stimulant go in my body, reacts or responds instantly. You know? Like last week in overseas, I entered the premises. The moment I enter, I know that it's full of chemicals. True enough, there was a little bit of rash developed on my skin. So likewise, when I tried the three-in-one coffee and the, the ready-made cup coffee, in less than two minutes of swallowing it, my stomach acid starts to churn up. But when I drink the real, authentic brew freshly made, I don't have any problem at all. The capsule ones uh, are similar to the freshly brewed ones. So I guess that's... I mean, it is brewed already, right? And then they seal no, it. No, 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 it's not dry. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's the uh, coffee powder. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Then, then it's fine. As long as it's fresh, it's fine. No, okay. It's actually made it and then sealed up in a cup. No, no. No, 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 no. So I always use my body as a barometer for to say whether I'm taking the real stuff or fake stuff. Okay. But I used to take a lot of three in one. Oh my god, that's if you read the ingredients of three in one, huh, it's it's highly toxic. Yes, 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 yes. So I ban even my staff from drinking it. Then I realized they're hiding it and drinking it. I said, oh my God, what can I do? <laughs> Even tell them the truth also, they don't want to be open to listen. <laughs> but now my my all my current new staff are very good. They all take very good healthy products and they maintain the health very well to an extent. Even all my clients uh, tell me that, oh, your staff are a role, good role model. They're all slim, slender and very energetic. Mm. So, um, does the audience have any questions? Uh, if there is no questions, uh, I guess uh, we... I yes. Sorry about the decaf. Decaf uh, coffee. Well, uh, I haven't tried that. I haven't Try tried to avoid that. a decaf coffee because uh, there is a process uh, you know, it's a chemical process to to, to remove the caffeine. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Tan, um, uh, would you like to advise on that? Uh, since this is your okay. <laughs> area of expertise. Don't drink decaf coffee. Why, 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 why you want to drink decaf coffee? People drink coffee because of caffeine and also the polyphenol. No, you, because... You you know, like because of caffeine, sometimes it will 
it will actually affect the stomach and also your sleep. So some people will just say like, oh, why not just take a decaf coffee? Yeah, about that. How's your how's your stomach? How's your tummy, uh, Dr. Lim? Is it more My regulated? Uh, better? You can take milk now, take coffee now? Oh, very much better now. I can take uh, coconut milk as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, coconut milk, you cannot take one? Uh? Uh, last time, I cannot take. Lau, I can lausai one. So what's the dosage of your kisiki you're taking and which one are you taking daily basis? Uh, daily basis like once uh, once a day. Mm -hmm. Then what's the one that I'm taking? Uh? I think it should be classic, I think. Yeah. Oh, classic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So 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 I I you know, one day we you we have to uh, do a testimonial video from you, uh Dr. Lim, if you don't mind. No, absolutely important. Yeah. And, yeah. Because a lot of people have the same problem, um, you know, lactose intolerance. G E R D. Yeah. Good. And all that. Yeah. So 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 uh yeah it is it is uh, important for you to share your experience absolutely yeah but also we have um a, a bit of an update uh, for our psoriasis uh, customer mm -hmm. um you know her her hands legs are pretty much cleared now she has a bit left you know a bit behind her ears and all that so uh we are hoping that soon um, you know, fingers crossed uh, she will be able to do a testimonial for us like your product works like magic for eczema psoriasis yeah but Without any doubt at all yeah she she started taking it um, since um, Chinese New Year so it's oh. been a good uh, six months mm. yeah and 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 the, the, the first couple of weeks was uh, traumatic for us because you know, her, her feet, her face, you know, bloated because yes. of the reaction of all the uh, steroids that she... she, right. she been, the body uh, just purging it away to clean the... Yes, that's right. Uh, how do I do the sensor? I think... <laughs> <laughs> and she was... Yeah, you, you were saying like purging, right? She, she changed her skin of the whole body. She yeah. was telling me that she's like she was like a snake. Everything, uh, her skin was like an old lady skin, so wrinkled, and then uh keep on changing, keep on peeling off. And then she said when she moved, and then she can see skin flying. Wow. So it was that bad. Um, wow. I told her to, to reduce the dosage, but she was very confident with this product. Uh, she she was saying that no, I want um I want to continue to take it because she is about forty years old. Uh, all her life she had tried so many products, nothing worked. I mean, she don't feel anything, but this she said I have a reaction, and I can see that my skin is changing. So she um, she she's uh -oh. yeah yeah please yeah. Oh, she she was the one who gave us the confidence, you know, for her to to take it uh, as usual as a dosage, because we were saying, okay, you it, it may be too much because uh, sometimes it was mo even more inflamed, and I told her to to reduce it and to slow down, but she just continued to take twice a day. Uh, I mean, I use uh, some keywords very specifically. One is called response and the other one is called reaction. Uh, and in your case, the lady's case is actually a response. To me, a response is a positive thing. A reaction or an adverse reaction is negative. But in her case, though people think it is an adverse, no, it is a response. It's a positive response from the body by taking the right product. So I'm very careful with it. I won't use the word reaction. It's a response. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, and 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 can see that um, she used to have um, 
edema, if I'm not mistaken, you know, chron chronic uh, chronic uh, water retention wow. due to all the 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 uh, you know, steroids that she's been taking. So now that she's healing and her water retention is 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 uh, you know reducing, you can see that she has wrinkled, uh, you know, flabby skin even in her on her arm so 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 i guess uh, kiseki has um, a, a a positive um response um for for her lah. Ah, i see that's a good news yeah yeah Very really good news no trust me i said uh, postbiotics is something uh, which is harmless to anybody because for some people are allergic to prebiotic and probiotic but postbiotics, because it's a metabolite, it has already been converted to for immediate absorption without any more processing. This will not do harm to anybody, including a baby, in my yeah. personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's just like one of our, our clients um, at you know 36 month pregnant uh, pregnancy. Her baby, um, you know, they did the doctor detected, you know, water in the baby's lung. Uh, immediately she took royal. Uh -huh. After a week, or I do not know, a week or two, um, went for another round of check, and the baby was all right. No, oh, that, that, that that's a miracle. Yeah, that is why. It's that's why I said, you know, normally for pregnant women, uh, they all say, doctors tell, don't take anything except for folic acid. I say, come on, just don't believe it. Use your wisdom and choose real food because real food is medicine and fake food needs medicine. So like Kisiki products are real food, you know, <laughs> anyone can take without any worries at all. Exactly, exactly. In fact, pregnant women may have constipation. This will prevent constipation. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So um, for those, the audience, uh, if you have uh, other questions besides uh, our today's topic. So how uh, about the gentleman who asked for this topic? Uh, Mr. K C Yo, uh, he does not have any question for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that, 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 that means, you know, you guys have done a great job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany and yourself, uh, Dr. Siva, you have done a great job. That's why there's no questions. Okay, cool. All yeah. right, then let's. Okay, so um, if there's no questions, um, let me stop sharing. Yeah, if there's no uh, any more, if, uh, sorry, if there's no questions, um, you know, feel free to 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 propose any topics uh, for us, uh, like uh, what Mr. Casey Yo did, and also uh, our previous uh, client. Uh, 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 viewer um, did as well for 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 artificial sugars so um we will be back the on 17th of august so um and uh, we will announce the uh, topic uh, that we will be discussing uh, maybe maybe we will have a new speaker as well so uh, fingers crossed uh, that uh, you know the timing we can arrange the timing and uh, we will announce the topic soon. So um, if you have not liked our page, subscribed our page or share our, our videos and all that, please uh, help us. Uh, it will help, you know, it will do us a lot of uh, uh, help. And um, thank you so much uh, to all, all of you. Uh, and this, your message was uh, good. We will be back. That's one of the famous movie dialogue, do you know? But the thing, yeah. movie it is, I will be back. Yeah. So, yeah, so we will be back uh, yeah. on 17th. So stay tuned. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Take care.